cost of the inventory, the second half, because we didn't just make that revenue from nothing. We had to give something up. What did we give up? We gave up inventory costing 22 plus 1 under the LIFO method. So if we take negative of this, there's our debits and credits. Inventory is going to go down by 23 and cost of goods sold will cost of goods sold will go up by 23. So let's post this out. So cost of goods sold in V41 will equal the 23,000. That will make this go up in the debit direction, put us out of balance. Net income will go down to here. Then we're going to go to the inventory. Something's in it. So I'm going to double click on it, go to the end of it, plus, and then go to the inventory and inventory will then go down, put us back in balance down to 4,000, which matches our worksheet here. All right, and then we're going to take a look at the next transaction, which will happen. I'm going to make sure to put it on the next row down here on row 39. And we are on 318, where we had a purchase of 120 at $60. So we're going to back in the purchasing column, these three columns here. And we purchased 120 tab at $60 tab. I'm going to multiply that out by saying equals left twice times left once and control enter gives us the 72. Then I'm just going to copy these layers back down. Now I'm going to eliminate this layer because of course it is gone and this layer was still here. So I'm just going to copy that. That's our oldest layer. Now that's the ones we're going to sell last. And now we have this new layer of the 120 at 60. So we have the raising prices and in, if all else is equal, prices will generally rise over time. And therefore, in terms of dollars, we've got the 4,000 plus the 72. So let's add those up. Four plus the 72. We are now at 112 in our ending inventory. Let's record that transaction now. It's a pretty straightforward recording. We bought inventory for this 72. And notice there's no estimation in that. This is what we bought it for. It is what it is. And that means we're going to put it on accounts payable. In this case, assuming we bought it on account, let's post that out and see what we get. We're going to double click on the inventory, go to the end of it, plus I'm going to select this 72 and enter. That will make the inventory go up to 112, which matches our worksheet here. Then we're going to go to the accounts payable. That's a credit and the credit's going to go up because we bought it on account 72. Credit and a credit, the same thing, makes it go up in the credit direction, puts us back in balance. Now let's take a look at the next transaction. I'm going to make sure we're on the next row, row 41, and we are on 325. 325, we made another purchase of 2,000 units at 62. So we bought another um, 200 units, 200 units tab at 62 tab. Going to multiply that out equals left twice 200 uh, times I should say left once control enter to stay on the same cell and that's the 12 4. Same thing's going to happen here as of this date and time we had these two layers. I'm going to copy these two layers not the balance just the layers. I'm going to copy those and I'm going to paste them in our new section. I'm going to paste them just the values only. So I don't have the cell references won't have to change on us. And then I'm going to put this new new layer down here. So I want all my layers as of this date and below in this three columns. So I'm going to copy these right click copy and then put them on K 43 right click paste one, two, three. So now we have 80 oldest layer at 50. Then we bought another. We have uh, 120 at 62. And then we have the newest layer of 2000 at, I'm sorry, 120 at 60. Then we have the newest layer of 200 units at $22 per unit. So if we sum those up, then we have a total ending balance of 4000 plus 72 plus 12, 4, giving us the 23, 6. Then if we record that straightforward recording, once again, we bought it for the 12, 4. And we bought it on account in this assumption, therefore the accounts payable will be the credit. And if we post that out, then if we go to the inventory uh, here, double click on that, 
go to the end of it, plus inventory is going to go up because it's a debit. We're going to another debit to like things, make it go up to 23.6. That's what we have in our worksheet. Then we're going to post the accounts payable by double clicking. I'm going to go to the end of it. We have a credit and then another credit to like things, make it go up. And that will put us back in balance right here. No effect on net income when we purchase the inventory because we have not yet used it to help us generate revenue. Then we're going to go to the next uh, row. So we're on row 44. Going to scroll over here and we have 329, the last activity that happened. And we sold now $160 for $95. Once again, remember that that 95 is the sales price, not the cost. So it has nothing to do with this worksheet. It will have to do with these first journal entry. These two numbers are all we need to know for the sales price. And it's kind of what shows up if you were going to ring something up on a check register. It shows you the sales price, not the cost. But we do have to calculate the cost. Cost being, in this case, it's got to be either 50, 60, or 62. So we sold 160 units. So these are our three layers. And which ones are we going to sell first? In this case, we're going to sell the latest ones, meaning the 200 at 62 is the first layer that we're going to take the units out of and of course we only sold 160 of them so we're going to assume that they're all out of this last most expensive layer therefore we're going to have the 160 at the 62 in this case and we're going to say that that equals left twice to the 160 times left once to the 62 control enter gives us the 9920 so what do we have left then in our rows well we didn't sell any of the 80 at 50 we didn't sell any of the 120 so i'm just going to bring those down i'm going to copy those going to bring those down right click paste them one two three and then of the last row we sold of these 200 minus we sold 160 of them meaning that we have 40 left those cost 62 dollars we multiply that out then we have the 40 times the 62. And so then how much do we have left as of the end? As of this date, we have the 4,000, the 72, and the 2480. You'll note that this one can result in the most amount of layers because clearly we may not ever uh, take away the final layer. And so this first layer, if we keep on making more purchases than sales, won't be eaten into and it'll remain there pretty much forever. So if we sum this up, we've got the 4,000 plus the 72 plus the 2,480, and that will give us the 13,680. So then if we post this, remember that there's two journal entries that happen here. One is the sales journal entry, which is just similar to a service industry, uh, and the other is the cost of the sales that we sell. So let's break those out into two transactions, even though they happen at the same time. The first one, all we need are these two numbers in order to do that. And this is the calculation that, again, you see in the cash register most of the time. They're going to tell you the sales price, which is, of course, the 160 units times 95 per unit. That's the sales price. And in this case, we're going to assume we sell it on account. They're not going to tell you, of course, the cost of goods sold on the cash register, the cost that the company or the store bought it for. But the machine should be calculating that if they're on a perpetual type system. So let's record this then. We're going to go up to accounts receivable. I'm going to double click on that. People owe us more money. Therefore, it's going to go up. This is a debit. This is a debit. And therefore, the debits are going to go up to 95.8 in this case. Let's go to revenue. I'm going to double click on it because something's in it. This is a credit. I'm going to say plus. This is a credit. And that's going to make this go up in the credit direction. Put us back in balance. Make net income go up like so. So net income is up, meaning that the credits are beating the debits. The credits being uh, represented by negative or bracketed numbers minus the debit or expenses. Then we're going to record the cost of the goods that we sold. And we calculated that to be 9920 in this case. Therefore, we're going to cost of goods sold and the inventory will go down by that amount. So I'm going to double click on the cost of goods sold, go to the end of it, plus... We're going to go to this 9920. That's a debit. This is a debit, making this go up in the debit direction to the 32920. Made net income go down. Then we'll go to the inventory. I'm going to double click on that, go to the end of that, plus, and select the 9920 credit, 
This is a credit, this is a debit, making this go down to 13680, which matches our worksheet over here.